I am a volunteer here at the Recover Ministry. I struggle with sexual integrity, substance abuse, codependency, and the effects of PTSD, and my name is Taylor. So God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. This prayer is a keystone to our recovery ministry, so hopefully you're a little bit familiar with it. When I first came into recovery, many of the principles in this prayer were foreign ideas to me. I had attempted to control and manipulate every aspect of my life and others by people-pleasing, fixing and serving with no concept of boundaries, abusing people and substances to escape my own dysfunction. I would change my appearance, interests, behaviors based on who I was with, wrestling constantly with cognitive dissonance and indecisiveness, not knowing who I was, what I believed, what I liked. I relentlessly tried to fix my friends, enable them and get them sober at the expense of my own health, bringing them to recover because they needed help. I even got a marketing degree to learn how to manip manipulate people professionally. I was passive and avoidant to the max and deeply terrified of being disliked, afraid of conflict and confrontation. As you can imagine, this level of misdirected effort led me to great anxiety and distress, resulting in fragmented identity and robbing me of my peace. I soon came to find out that this was considered textbook codependency. In the broadest sense, codependency can be defined as an addiction to people, behavior, or things. Codependency is the fallacy of trying to control interior feelings by controlling people, things, and events outside, on the outside. To the codependent, control, or the lack of it, is central to every aspect of life. Codependents are willing to compromise their own values, choices, and behavior at the expense of their personal well-being. It sounded a lot like me. I struggled to understand why this was unhealthy behavior because it was all I had known, and it seemed to be normal and the Christian thing to do on the surface. Codependents always put others first before taking care of themselves. They give themselves away, they martyr themselves, all things Christianity honors. The difference between a life of service and codependency can take several forms, but lar largely differentiate based on motivation. Do we give ourselves and our service freely or because we consider ourselves to be of no value? Do we seek to people please? Do we act out of guilt and fear? Do we act out of a need to be needed? To love well, we have to check the posture of our hearts, continually adjusting accordingly. For me, God began to show me that while my behavior or intentions may have appeared to be noble and even Christian-like, I was actually using people to get my emotional needs met, but in a selfish, destructive manner. People used to tell me that they, they knew my heart was in the right place and my intentions were good, but I was hurting people by going about it in the wrong way. My intentions and my heart didn't match my actions. This created disastrous relationship patterns revolved around what I could get from someone else rather than giving unconditional love and honest acceptance. He revealed to me that this stemmed from my selfish human nature, my desire to be loved and belong, false pride, low self-worth, and fear of man and God. I learned I didn't trust myself, God, or others to take care of my needs, and I didn't honestly ask for them to be met, but I manipulated people and situations to get what I wanted. I was a bit of a control freak, in denial, and honestly, I thought I could manage my life better than God. I didn't trust that the Lord had my best interest at heart and that his ways were better than my own. Through recovery, I've clung to the serenity prayer, repeating it daily. This prayer and recovery have helped keep me focused on what am I responsible for. I understand now that the only things that I can essentially control pertain to myself, my thoughts, my feelings, my attitude, my actions. I am unable to control everything outside of myself. It has also helped me to surrender control of myself and my will to God, seeking his will above my own. It's taken me a while to comprehend that true recovery is about much more than behavior modification, just trying harder and having more self-discipline, building healthy habits, setting boundaries, or having self-control and willpower. But it's more about surrendering my life and my will over to the care of God, loving and serving others well. This process has taught me to think of recovery from codependency in two main respects. One being surrendering control of my life and my will to God. The other pertains to uh, learning to love in a healthy way. 
in scripture and in life, we're confronted with these difficult juxtaposed themes like control and surrender, self-love and humility, free will and predestination, holding in tension the kingdom of God, our role in God's plan, and the ways of the world. While much of these concepts vary based on your personal beliefs, your doctrine or theology and worldviews, etc., there are some spiritual principles that remain constant. When it comes to surrender and control, the world tells us that we are in control of our lives and our destiny. However, the word teaches us that we are not the owners of our lives and our destinies. We are managing the life and destiny given to us by God. By the world standard, it appears that we have greater control over our lives than we do. Yet in the kingdom of God, control is elusive. We are instructed to manage our, ourselves, but at the same time, our lives are not even our own. We see this in the truth of scripture. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. 1 Samuel 2, 6. The power of life and death is in the hands of God. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. James 1, 17. Everything good, every gift and blessing that we have in life is not from the enemy who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, nor was it just because of our good works. Being born, I never chose that. Being born in America, our personality, our time, talents, and treasures, all gifts from God. Some of this is for us, just God providing for and delighting in taking care of his children. Some of it is for others, his kingdom coming and him trusting us to exercise the gifts of God for the benefits of others. It's our responsibility to manage what we've been given as far as it depends on us. What we do matters to God. He wants a relationship, to be involved in the process, but he also wants us to choose to submit to him in love, to acknowledge and trust that he knows best. It's one of the greatest gifts he's given us, the chance to choose to love and submit to him instead of demand it or create us that way. We are instructed as disciples to surrender our lives and wills to him. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew 16, 25 through 26. It's only fitting that our creator who gave us the right to choose relationship with him would ask us to surrender our lives back to him out of trust, reverence, and worship. I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to pre present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your true and proper worship. Romans 12, 1. This seems counterintuitive. If we give, give up our wills, the world will tell us we are being taken advantage of and we will not get what we desire. However, the spiritual principle contradicts that. That when we give up ourselves, we are actually filled with the spirit, which provides us with what much more of exactly what we truly long for. We see this principle play out in the interdependence of family community. When we're single, we're selfish in that we do what we want when we want. When we enter into relationship, we sacrifice our time and ourselves, which would logically lead us to believe that we are losing something. But actually, God increases our capacity and we gain more joy out of our selflessness. As we have children, our time is split even more and we're increasingly focused on the needs of others. However, the joy and blessings re we receive in community in return fill us up even more. The kingdom is upside down to the world. When we lay down our lives, we aren't losing ourselves and our freedoms, but we're su submitting our hearts, character, and wills to be transformed by the one who created us. This allows us to be in greater alignment with what we were actually created for, bringing about much more fulfillment, love, and freedom. As we consciously surrender control and submit our lives and wills to God on a heart level, we find redemption in our codependent nature through relearning how to love in a healthy way. We are commanded in scripture to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. Mark 12, 30 through 31. This model of love implies a hierarchy. Love God first, ourselves second, so that we then know how to love our neighbors as we do ourselves. Jesus taught the value of the individual. He said that we are to love others equal to ourselves, not more than ourselves. The love of self forms the basis of loving others. When we mess with this hierarchy, when we value others greater than ourselves or ourselves greater than God, we run into pride, idolatry, 
inflated and deflated egos. We put people on pedestals they have no business being on and hold them to unfair expectations God never intended them to fulfill. We risk losing our identities, feeling empty, lonely, and burnt out. We put our hope in the things that can't sustain us and just distract us from the main thing. The one who loves unconditionally is faithful in all things and sovereign over all. God is still redeeming the unhealthy identity and traits I've created for myself. He's purifying my motives, intentions, and heart daily. He's helping me to define what I believe and why and teaching me what healthy relationship looks like and to trust again, training me to see and value myself and others the way he does and how to love him, myself, and others. For me personally, recovery from codependency has looked like getting to know and value myself, showing up as myself, walking in integrity so that I'm the same person in all situations, what, where my beliefs match my actions. It's still a process I'm in the middle of, and it's so easy to revert back to codependent patterns uh, without even noticing it. But each day I get a little more self-aware and am quicker to do better when I realize myself acting out of old patterns. This is what we're working towards in recovery, living in the tension of loving God, self, and others as ourselves, the balance of surrender and stewardship, navigating how the kingdom of God works and operates and our role in it. Doing so through our own willpower eventually always leads to disaster. We can only find the serenity and recovery through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I urge us to surrender our wills that we may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him in the next. Thank you. God bless. So women, if you will join us online for our small group Zoom sessions, we'd love to have you. And then don't forget about our end of the month chip night and barbecue coming up next week on Friday. We'll see you there.